Yo, you already know what it is. It's your boy Ace General, aka Came from Money and Violence, and I'm here rocking out with the Pot NYC. Uh, my name is Ace General. I play the character Came from Money and Violence. What's going on? My name is Dude Dollars, and I play the character Shooter Shane on Money and Violence. Nah, I just know how to protect myself. I hear. Okay, so for those that don't know about Money and Violence, can you explain to us what it is and how your characters are? So. All right. Well, myself, I play Shooter Shane, and my character is a mixture of how Brooklyn was in the '90s and how it is in 2015, on the one. So, what Money and Balance is, it's just a raw depiction of the harsh reality that's going on in the streets. With that being said, we just showing you what's really going on out here. There's nothing fabricated, we're not running around shooting at police, shooting 50 times, nobody gets shot. There's none of that. We're giving you the harsh reality. We're showing you what's really going on. I used to say my character came, which pretty much is uh, unemployed, man that's looking for money to feed his daughter and also he gets bullied by a neighborhood bully. Okay. Anytime he has a little money in his pocket, he's getting robbed. Right. You know what I mean? So he's not built from the streets. He's totally opposite from Shooter Shane, which is street disciplined and you know, he's known for being on the block in the streets. So I used to say I'm not like my character, but at the end of the day, Kane is really just trying to do anything to feed his daughter. Me having a daughter in real life, I feel like if I'm ever in a position where I don't have it, I would try to do anything it takes to feed my daughter. You know what I mean? So I believe that I am kind of like Kane. Now, me and myself, uh, I'm very similar to Shooter Shane. And the reason why I say that because I'm a young black person that's growing up in the neighborhood. Now, there's some similarities and there's some different. Now, you could say I'm not the one that's on the block shooting people. But Shane wasn't even. Shane was somebody who just protected himself. Like, it's, if you watch the show, you'll see that nothing that none of the four main characters did started in trouble. All we did was defend ourselves. Besides New York, how has, been, how has the perception been outside of New York? I don't, think we, I don't think we didn't touch a part of the globe. Yeah. Right now, we had 20 million views. But when you look at the analytics, it shows every area that you hit, and the whole thing is red. I don't think it's... No way that you didn't touch on the globe. Now, did you expect that to happen? No, no. Because besides NYC, Brooklyn, the second biggest place we get our followers from is Toronto, Canada. My Queens. You know, Toronto's Toronto. a special place. Yeah, they show us a lot of love, man. Now, Shout I, out to Toronto. I really want you to understand what he said, though. Not other than Brooklyn, not New York City, mm -hmm. other than Brooklyn, Toronto after South. Brooklyn, the next biggest area is Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. And then come to the other parts of New York City. And now that money and violence drop for some reason, it feels like it's changing because it's now it's like, yo, it's not cool not to support New York. You feel me? Because it's right. like we have celebs supporting us. We got people that want to be shooter shame. The guys from New York that think they're shooting. Like shame. if you don't support, then you're like the outcast. Yeah, you and know what I mean? So you're like, like the oddball, the cornball who just wants to be. You can't walk into somewhere in Brooklyn and be like, I don't want to watch money. Right, Why? right. Yo, you're not from Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Like, because so, I actually got put on the show from a few of my queens friends and they were like yeah you don't watch this show like, yeah it's like, like you got and i'm like okay well maybe i'm a combo yeah. we don't get a lot of hatred we don't get that at all uh we expected that we expect people to, like get out of here nobody want to watch this um they hear this title money and violence and they run from it because all they think is it's another group of black guys that's killing and shooting each other robbing each other right in all reality, all we showing you, money and violence is the only two things that people respect. Mm -hmm. So whatever kind of whatever kind of show we did, and we called it the money and violence, it could be the same thing. We can have a Fortune 500 company. We can do a movie about Fortune 500 and still call it money and violence. Because there's only two ways it's going to happen. Right. Either we buy it with money, or we take it with violence. Me, personally, I feel like when I watch this, it kind of takes me back to when I watch it gives me that feel. I think that like pretty feeling, it feels like real life. Mm -hmm. So were you guys trying to go for that? The why is the why did a lot of political they, they, they right. 
contest cops, you know, show. but we're so real and raw. We're, we're the voice of the people in the streets. Like, different characters is from the streets, you know what I mean? Of course, you're going to have police interaction. You're going to have, you know, maybe something about what's going on in today's politics with the Eric Garner case. We had an episode where we featured the Eric Garner case, and, you know, because we want the youth to learn from this. But at the end of the day, a lot of people draw into money and violence because it's so real and raw. The difference between The Wire and Money and Violence, besides where YouTube and their HBO, mm -hmm. besides they got a full production and it's just us, mm -hmm. Money and Violence is fighting for survival. Now, you guys aren't like trained actors or anything like that. You guys are just, yeah, just out there. None of us never held a camera, none of us ever really did something. Some of us still never held a camera, some of us still never edited. Well, as far as like, do you guys do anything like in the community with the with the bus from the show? As we, as we take it, we give back. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, what we're doing now, is we're gonna continue to talk to the kids. We're gonna continue because that's another thing about money and violence. There's no big brother no more. There's no guidance out there. Okay. Like everybody's a big homie. Today's big homie will give a young dude a pack. And here, tell him go outside and sell us. But he won't tell him what the consequences of selling us is. Or he actually won't even give him what he deserves. He'll just make sure that he gets the money and whatever happened to him just happened. And then once that happened to him, they're just going to go get another little homie. And that's not what guidance is. There's none of that no more. So that's what we're out there doing. Do you guys have any up and coming events? Like um, right now, actually, we're, we're pushing the Season Spark program as a fundraiser for us to push Season 2. Now, Season 1. We did out of our own pockets, and we put it on YouTube for free. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, we don't want the supporters to wait very long for a season two while we shop around for the major networks, the higher platforms. So we're thinking to ourselves, since they love this so much with one mic, one camera, what would they think with a whole production team? So the fundraiser is to basically build money for a production team and also shout out to the crew we have. We have a crazy staff crew that work days and nights for free, the whole season one, you know, and they didn't have to, and now we want to actually be able to pay them something to keep, you know, pushing for season two till that big check come, or till somebody actually picks it up, so if anybody wants to donate and help us raise this money, you can go to www.moneyandviolence.nyc, and you'll be able to donate, we take as low as a dollar, you know, you start off with a dollar as much as you want, and the higher you go, there's more incentives that you will get back in return. Now, what were you guys doing before Money Line? Uh, we was the promoters, the, the biggest promoters in NYC. So y'all just went from the biggest promoters, y'all took that, and y'all said, let me just add this, and now we just... Nah, it didn't start off like that. Break it down. <laughs> <laughs> I wish going. it was that simple, I wish it man. was just one, two, three. Actually, we had... Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had... <laughs> we done had a lot. Now, look. We started off with promotion. That's when me and Ace, myself and Ace, was party promoters. And then the dude that played Miz, his name is Ray, and Mo, that played Ray. We went to them, we went to them for help. So what we did, we had Cloud on TV, and now we joined together. So we went from party promoting to entrepreneurs, because now we're selling everything. So now we created our own clothing line. So we went from the promotion to selling the clothing line. We were selling the clothing line, everything was working fine, but it wasn't moving fast enough. We couldn't, we wasn't patient. Yeah. So we went to the next thing, and then the next thing, and then one day Mo came in the house and said, let's do a movie. We all looked at each other and said, let's do a movie. So we did a movie. Now, when we started filming the movie, within two months, we only had 18 minutes worth of film. So Mo was like, this is taking too long too. So let's do a web series. <laughs> so yeah, Very impatient. He said, let's do a web series. So we said, all right, cool, we're gonna do a website. We said, we got 18 minutes, that's enough for one episode, and then we move on there. We said, when are we gonna start? He said, tomorrow. We said, you're bugging. <laughs> so what we did was, we took two weeks to promote it, and then that 18 minutes that we had, we episode was episode one. one. But I wanna thank all the supporters. I wanna thank all the females and males. I mean, I wanna say females, you know why I wanna say that? Because this actually grew from females. Females was telling, because we don't have a large male family. We have a very large female fan base. So females are telling their friends, and then their friends are telling their boyfriends, and that's how it's spread. Because if I honestly went to a dude and tell him to watch my show, he probably wouldn't watch it. But if I went to you, one day you probably be bored, you turn it on, and then you probably talk up, and then she would probably talk her man. 
Can I just tell you guys like that? First, because if you go to a girl, right, and she watches the break, and she's watching it, she's telling her girlfriends, whatever. If her dude feels like she's paying a little too much attention to all these dudes on the screen, he gonna watch it just to see what it's about. <laughs> yes. Then he gonna be like, okay, so you watching this now, we gonna watch it together. <laughs> I also, I wanted to shout out, you know, there's a lot of people within the community. We help the community, but there's also a lot of people that's like, when you see money involved, you don't know they're in the back, behind the scenes. There's like, these little saying that now. They help us out. There's a uh, porn ride. There's the bar boutique. There's, there's a whole lot. Life shop, um, drink cup. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, everybody that let us use the establishment because they didn't have to believe in the project. You know what I'm saying? So, we want to thank all those people. And if I let somebody out, they didn't need to. We we appreciate you. There's a lot, a real, a real lot. It's like barbershops. Like, there's a barbershop out here called Platinum Plus, right? Yeah. And in that barbershop, I don't care which, whenever I go in that barbershop, before I come in, I hear them arguing something about money and something. You know, when they talk about it in the barbershop, in the beauty salon, mm -hmm. you made it. Yeah. You made it. Well, I don't know. When, I, when we was at season five, we, I mean, season five, I'm sorry. We was at episode five. <laughs> I went to the barbershop that Vince and the Jamaicans had an issue with. And this is on the off day, and I walked in there to use the bathroom, and I walked in there, everybody's just looking at me, and I'm looking at everybody like, what's going on? But I didn't want to sit there. So as I'm coming out the bathroom, I look at everybody, look at me, and everybody looked at the TV, like, oh, and I ain't know how to react. So I stormed out the barbershop. I didn't know what was going on. I ain't know how to react. I wasn't used to that. Now, I'm going in there, I start doing this, I might turn around, I might take pictures with everybody, and I feel comfortable. Once again, I want to shout out Mo, Rafe. I really want to say thank you for making everything possible. I understand that there's no boss inside of this team. All four of us got the same equal amount of responsibility a lot just now. He got the most responsibility. <laughs> All four of us got the equal amount of ownership. But I really want to say thank you to you because without you, none of this was possible. If you didn't have that cup of Hennessy before you got in the house, you probably didn't tell us the, that you want to do this movie. And I'm really thankful and I'm happy that you did this. Definitely. Once again, for those that never seen Money and Violence, check it out on YouTube or on Cloud9TV.net. Don't forget, help us bring y'all to season two y'all all waiting for. Go to www.moneyandviolence.nyc and make a donation as low as a dollar. All right? And I know y'all got more than a dollar. Now, when y'all make those donations, you heard it here that there is a season five. Hello, it's your boy Do Dollars, aka Shooter Shane. I'm here with my man Ace General, aka Brent Man Kane from Money and Balance. And we're now rocking out with the pot and watch him got calm. You supposed to be like my soldier Thought you was looking out Got me looking over my shoulder Holding hammers like grudges Bitch acts around cause they know